Hello and welcome back to Ledger Life. It's good to have you with us. The builder scene on the internet computer keeps picking up pace and yes, more invite codes are landing. Caffeine AI in particular seems to be churning out new dApps almost every week. And this time, four projects really stood out. First up is Fabio's Bitcoin Dominance Indicator. It's a tool built in just an hour with the help of Caffeine AI. It lets traders track how the top 50 non-stable coin altcoins are performing against Bitcoin, giving a quick read on market shifts. Then there is Tetric P from Sky Terrier, a playful spin on the classic block game. Sky put in the hours and 19 rounds of tweaking before settling on a version that's now live for the community to try out. It's a reminder that some builds come together fast and others reward a bit of stubborn persistence. We have also got a project from Pog Studio who decided to test Caffeine AI's limits with a robot battle game. The idea was simple. Create a game where NFT-based robots could battle it out, but the execution proved a bit trickier. Integrating NFTs with live game mechanics turned out to be a challenge, especially when it came to fetching metadata on demand. The project is still evolving and Pog Studio has shared it with the community, hoping others might have ideas for cracking the NFT integration puzzle. And then there is Westcliff Technologies, who went with a much more straightforward experiment. They asked Caffeine AI to build a classic blackjack game, and it delivered. Logic, interface, everything was generated within minutes. No hand-coded fixes needed. It's a neat example of how AI can help developers get quick prototypes off the ground when the task is clear-cut. All of these projects show how varied the experience can be. Sometimes the AI nails it on the first go. Other times you have to wrestle with it, tweaking prompts until you get what you want. Neither developer seems put off by the quirks though. If anything, it's become part of the creative process. They are building, sharing and learning along the way. And that's what makes this phase quite exciting to watch. Now, moving on to a story that's been making the rounds this week and one that sparked a bit of debate. Jason Lemkin, a well-known figure in the SaaS world, shared a pretty shocking account of losing a production database while coding on Replit. According to his post on X, Replit ignored cord freezes, rewrote core pages, and then wiped out his production database all when the system was supposed to hold steady. Lemkin said the deletion caught him off guard, especially after being told rollback wasn't possible, only for Replay to later admit that it actually was. What frustrated him most was the lack of proper safeguards. This story drew a sharp response from Divinity founder Dominic Williams. Dom kind in using the incident to highlight why the internet computer stack, particularly the one powering Caffeine AI, is built with guardrails to prevent accidental data loss. He made his point quite bluntly, saying Dude had his production database deleted while wipe coding. His comment underscored the broader discussion about AI coding tools, system reliability, and whether developers can trust platforms to protect live data. Lemkin's thread painted a picture of someone torn between enthusiasm for what AI tools can do and disillusionment when things go wrong. He talked about his past experience with EchoSign and how losing a production database went against everything he believed in as a developer. Even though he eventually got the data back, the episode raised real concerns about how these coding platforms are set up and whether they are ready for serious work. For Dom, this wasn't just about Replit. It was a chance to explain why Caffeine AI runs on the internet computer's technical stack, which claims to prevent this exact kind of problem. The conversation took off among developers, many of whom echoed the need for better protections when using AI-assisted coding environments. This taps into a bigger question about the future of coding tools. As AI development platforms become more common, are they introducing new risk? Or do they offer the safety nets needed for modern app development? The debate isn't settled, but incidents like this are making developers think twice about where and how they build. 
Now to a bigger picture discussion. How does Caffeine AI's model compare with traditional software companies? The old software business model relied on building up product, selling licenses, and often locking users into a particular ecosystem. Companies invested heavily in marketing and sales to capture market share and then defended that turf through licensing agreements, patents, or proprietary tech. Caffeine AI and platforms like the Internet Computer are changing that dynamic by making applications clonable, tweakable, and redeployable by anyone, they are flipping the script on software ownership. No single company can lock down an idea. If someone builds something great on Caffeine, another developer can clone it, improve it, or spin off a new version. It's open competition where the best experience, not the biggest marketing budget, wins users over. This model leans heavily on community and iteration. It's not about selling a static product, but about being part of a living, evolving ecosystem. Apps can be forked, adapted, and reshared at a pace that outstrips traditional software cycles. That's both a challenge and an opportunity. Traditional firms may struggle with this openness, especially if their business depends on proprietary software. But it also means that innovation can come from anywhere, not just big companies with deep pockets. For users, this shift could mean more choice and better tools tailored to their needs. They are not stuck with off-the-shelf software anymore. Instead, they can pick from a variety of community-built apps or even build their own using tools like Caffeine AI. Whether this will completely change the software industry or sit alongside existing models is still up for debate. What's clear is that decentralized platforms are pushing everyone to rethink assumptions about software control and competition. Before we wrap, a quick note on Aaron Ting. Ting, who leads ICP Hub Singapore, has been appointed as an ambassador for the Singapore Internet Governance Forum that's SGIGF, an event tied to the United Nations. His new role comes as SGIGF gears up for its 2025 edition, which is expected to happen alongside Token 2049 in Singapore this October. The ambassador role connects Ting with a global network of people working on digital governance, emerging tech, and internet policy. SGIGF brings together policymakers, tech leaders, regulators, academics, NGOs, and the public to discuss key issues shaping the digital space. This year's forum is expected to tackle AI responsibility, data flows, online safety, and digital identity. For Ting, who has been active in the decentralized tech space, this gives him a new platform to engage with topics that sit right at the intersection of technology and governance. With Token 2049 attracting a global Web3 crowd, the overlap with SGIGF could spark some interesting discussions. So that's a wrap for today. If you would like to support Ledger Life, our donation wallet is in the description. You will also find links to the projects we mentioned, Pogged Studios Dropout Battle Game, Best Clips Blackjack app, the Jason Lemkin thread, and more on Aaron Tink's appointment. See you next time.